Hello, we're Andy, the maniacal cinephile, and here's our thoughts on the black phone. Andy, does the phone come in other colors? No, it's just a black phone that receives calls from the dead. Yeah, I saw that in the new Apple software update. The phone that is black is a supernatural horror film produced by Blumhouse Pictures. It was directed by Scott Derrickson and written by Derrickson and C. Robert Cargill, the duo known for Sinister and Doctor Strange. It is an adaptation of the 2004 short story by Joe Hill, the son of Stephen King. I don't see a resemblance. Derrickson already planned on making the black phone, but his departure from Doctor Strange 2, due to creative differences, freed up his schedule. But Disney gets along with all their directors! So let's see if we give the black phone a ringing endorsement. In 1978, five children go missing in North Denver. I really liked the opening credits that featured nostalgic stock footage of the 70s intercut with missing children posters. The images and music perfectly set up the movie. Young baseball pitcher Finney Shaw, a shy but clever 13-year-old boy, is tossed in a van by the Grabber. You don't need a van to kidnap a kid. Ted Bundy used a beetle. Would you like to see a magic trick? No. End of movie. Maybe when five kids have gone missing, you don't walk home alone and talk to Willy Wonka here with a creepy van. Finney wakes up in a soundproof basement with a black phone on the wall. Does it work? <laughs> Not since I was a kid. Then why does he keep it? Is the grabber also a hoarder? When the phone begins to ring, Finney discovers that he can hear the voices of the killer's previous victims, who offer him tips to survive. Maybe that's why he gets so many calls listed as potential spam. Meanwhile, Finney's little sister Gwen has psychic dreams that send her on a quest to find her brother. So a kid with the shining? His likeness isn't the only thing Joe Hill stole from his dad. Will Finney escape? Will Gwen find her brother? Will somebody answer the damn phone? <laughs> Mason Thames plays Finney, the young boy captured by the Grabber. He begins the film by essentially striking out. He loses the baseball game, he can't get the girl, and he's bullied by the other boys. His friend Robin, who's the toughest kid in school, who also likes horror movies, tells Finney he needs to stand up for himself. Finding his confidence and fighting back is exactly what Finney will have to do if he's gonna get out of that basement. You're gonna use a weapon. You raise the phone, step back, and swing. During the Stranger Danger talk, I don't remember anything about a magic phone. Madeline McGraw plays Gwen, Finney's younger sister, and she's a funny, tough little girl who cusses out everyone. Even Jesus. Sometimes you just gotta say, Jesus. What the fuck? Not only does she help fight off her brother's bullies, but she has a gift. Her psychic dreams play a big part in solving the case. Apparently, you're never too young to lead. A POLICE INVESTIGATION! Their mother also had these dreams, and it drove her to suicide, which is why their abusive father, Terrence, not Torrance, drinks so much. It's not a King story without an alcoholic father! Gwen is the soul of the movie, and their sibling Bond is the emotional core of the story. Lastly is Ethan Hawke as the Grabber, a child kidnapper and serial killer. In the short story, the Grabber is an overweight clown patterned after John Wayne Gacy. The director felt that needed to be updated, especially after the success of It. Hawke was hesitant to play a villain, but thankfully changed his mind. Maybe bad dudes are his future now. 
In the film, the Grabber wears several creepy masks, each exposing a different part of his face or showing a different mood. I made you some breakfast. What'd you put in that? Salt and pepper. <laughs> Food. Seasoned with only salt and pepper? You monster! One moment, his voice is deep and he's violent. The next, his voice is childlike and his behavior is clownish. He regresses to being a kid and his obsession with naughty boys hints at a troubled childhood. I don't know. He looks pretty happy to me. The mask was designed by the Sultan of Splatter, Tom Savini, and Jason Baker. Together, they've done stuff for the WWE, like The Fiend's Mask, and I even bought a COVID mask from Baker a while back. Now I'm all ready to go to a concert. Hawk may have been hesitant to play a villain, but he succeeds with this dark, unpredictable performance. However, the Grabber is mostly talk. We barely see him do anything more violent than the kids' bloody schoolyard fights. Gwen getting whipped by her father was more uncomfortable to watch. Besides for sitting upstairs with a belt, waiting for Finny to be a naughty boy, we don't really know what the Grabber's plan is. It'd be embarrassing if he stood up and his pants fell down. So, does the black phone dial up the horror? Not quite. Besides for two jump scares, this is more of a thriller. However, besides for a lack of scares and some pacing issues, the film is a faithful adaptation, full of suspense. Like waiting for the theater to get quiet, so you can rip a loud fart. <laughs> The 70s setting has enough orange and brown to make you vomit. The catchy soundtrack is contrasted with a dark bassy score that's fitting for a dank basement. The soundtrack for The Black Phone was scored by Mark Corvin, known for The Vivitch and The Lighthouse. Corvin is known for his innovation and experimental approach to film scoring, and in 2016 conceived the horror musical instrument, The Apprehension Engine. I want one, but the price makes me apprehensive. The movie is also about the sibling bond and children relying on themselves. At school, the teachers don't help. At home, the father doesn't help. The police don't help. Finny and Gwen rely on each other. Later, Finny relies on the other dead children as well. Where are the responsible adults? The Black Phone is a coming-of-age horror story with an interesting premise and features excellent performances, especially from the child actors and Ethan Hawke. The atmosphere is as thick as that soundproof door. The score is tense and the screenplay keeps you engaged. That's quite a feat for a kid talking to himself on the phone in an empty room for an hour. I am the phone! <laughs> so, is the film worth seeing? Yes. If the black phone rings, answer the call. We've been Andy, the maniacal cinephile. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time.